Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is Advent Calendar Day number 7 and for this video I'm going to be doing a tutorial for you on how I do my watercolour backgrounds. So this is a tutorial that a lot of you want to see so I thought I'd do it today and I'm going to be drawing these pair of eyes with kind of a masquerade mask. So I'm just going to show you what I'm going to be using for today's tutorial. So I'm going to be using masking fluid and I'm using the Daler and Rowney masking fluid and you'll also need an old paintbrush. So the masking fluid really clogs it up so don't use anything new and you can also use a toothbrush if you want a splattered effect so what masking fluid basically does is wherever you put masking fluid it protects that paper from getting any watercolour on it so it remains white so I'm also using the Dale and Rowney's watercolour paintbrushes to paint with and I'm going to be using the Winsor & Newton professional watercolours so these are quite expensive, they're the professional ones but they're really nice and I have like a 20 pan palette and I bought a few extra colours I'm also just going to be using a straw to blow some of the paint around to get a nice splattered effect. So for all the highlights I'm going to use this Winsor & Newton gouache so it's really nice and quite opaque so it goes over the watercolours really nicely and it's really nice to splatter it on. And then I've just got a palette which I'm going to use to mix all my colours in. And then finally I've got this watercolour brush pen which I'm going to be using a bit later as well. Okay, so that's all the materials I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So I start by first applying the masking fluid to all the parts that I want to make sure I don't get any watercolour on at the start. So I'm going to apply it over the eyes because I just want to do this in coloured pencil. I don't want to be doing this in watercolour. And I splatter it a bit with the paintbrush to get a nice splattered effect so that when I take off the masking fluid, there'll be white dots left behind that didn't get the watercolour on it. So. I put the masking fluid on bits of the jewels that I've got on the mask and then I'm just going to tap the paintbrush to get some nice splattered effects in a minute. So when this masking fluid dries it basically turns into a latex so a nice rubber which will peel off really easily but you have to make sure you let it dry before you put the watercolours over the top. So you'll know it's dry if you touch it, it'll be tacky, but none of the masking fluid will come off onto your fingers. So I really like masking fluid because it means that when you do your background, you, you can be really messy and you don't have to be really too particular. So I always tend to mask off the subject, so the main subject, so that when I'm doing the background, I can be really free and messy and just kind of fling the paint around. And I really like that freedom of not having to worry about um, making sure you don't get watercolour on your main subject. So once I've done that, the first thing I do is I apply water all over where the background's going to be and I use, uh, like, a, I tap on the paintbrush to get some of the water to go out into little droplets as well. So it's really important that you apply water first and then when you go in with your watercolours it will just spread out onto the water. So you don't want to put the watercolour straight onto dry paper. So I just use a really weak dilution of the blue to start with and I literally just place it onto the water and it spreads out itself. And also when I want some slatted effects I tap lightly on the paintbrush and it gives little droplets. So I'm using the Arches watercolour paper so it's the hot press so it's really really thick so this can take a lot of water really well. So when you're doing this technique you want to make sure you have a thick watercolour paper that will, won't buckle if you put too much water on it. Okay so I'm slowly adding some darker concentrations of the watercolour and I'm still just tapping them onto where they're going to be and then they spread out into the other colours. It's really important that you don't try and be too structured because with watercolour, if you want it to look really watery, it's got to be free flowing and it can't look too structured and fake. So when I do the drips, I first use some water and a really fine paintbrush and mark out with water where the drips are going to be because I don't trust myself to kind of tip the paper up and let them fall on their own. And then I just drop in the colour onto that water and it spreads out like I've been doing on the others. So I keep building up those layers and putting those darker colours where the darker shadows need to be. Next I'm just using that straw to blow some of the watercolour to get this nice little dripped effect. Okay, so once I've done that first layer of watercolour, if you don't want to wait too long for it to dry, what you can do is I use a hairdryer, but you need to make sure you have it on the cool setting. If you have it on the hot setting, then that masking fluid you put down will adhere more to the paper and it'll be harder to pull it off. So I have a cool setting which is really cold, it's not warm at all on my hairdryer. So I use that and 
at the start I hold it quite far away from the paper and I kind of guard my hand under the hairdryer so it doesn't blow directly onto the paper so much because if it does then it will try and spread out that watercolour and you don't want that until it's nearly dry and then you can go over it more directly because it won't spread out that watercolour because it's basically nearly dry. So if you do it with the hairdryer it only takes a couple of minutes to dry and then you can get straight on with the next layer. So as you can see I've got my hand under it because you can you can slightly see that it's moving around the watercolour as it is so if I didn't have the hat my hand there it would completely blow it in all directions and I really don't want that. Okay so as you can see when you dry it it goes a lot lighter so now I build up the second layer but I don't add water down on the paper first when I'm doing the second layer. So what I do is I just place the darker colours where the shadows are and then I'm going to use that brush pen to soften any edges if it's too harsh in places. So I kind of just stain the paintbrush so I don't have too much, I've kind of stained it and then I just rub it onto where those shadows need to be and then as you can see I'm just using that water pen to soften out the edges. So this is nice because when you add, um, when you let layers dry in between and then add new layers, you get that kind of watercolour edges forming as layers and it looks really nice. So when it all dries you'll just see the different layers of watercolour. And it really helps to add depth to the drawing as well. So as a general rule, so as a general rule I'd say for your first layer apply a lot of water and be really free and flowing but still make sure that you're only applying watercolour in the area that you want the background otherwise it can be easy to get a bit crazy and kind of fling it everywhere so make sure you're flinging it in kind of the places where you want that background to be centred and then once you let that dry and you've got the structure in then I'd be more cautious with the second layer and don't just kind of throw the paint around as much because you want to get your really free flowing structure in for the first layer and then once you've got that, those foundations in place and then you can work on just defining the structure a bit more. So for this mask I really wanted to give it a nice explosive feel to it and quite like an Arabian um, feel to the piece so I thought the red and blue would look really nice and then I'm going to have some blue and brown eyes to go with it that will look really mysterious. Okay so now I've finished with the second layer I'm going to go in and I let it dry for a little bit naturally and then I'm going to go in and just hair dry it dry. Okay so now I'm slowly peeling off the masking fluid so this will be really easy to peel off you just have to rub your finger along it and try not to be too aggressive with it so just slowly peel it off and you'll be able to easily tell if you miss any bits because it feels bumpy so I just run my finger along it to make sure I've got all the little bits off and then I get a big fluffy brush and I just brush that all away and then I just take my hand over it again just to make sure I haven't missed any little bits. Okay, so now I've done with the watercolour basics, I then go in and define the watercolour structure with coloured pencils, but first I'm just going to draw in the eyes. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about what I'm doing here, but let me know if you want to see any tutorials on any of the coloured pencil stuff that I've been doing. So if you want me to see me draw eyes and coloured pencil or the eyebrows or anything like that, and I'll do some tutorials on that for you guys, but I'm not going to go into too much detail about how I do the colour pencil work in this piece today.
Okay, so now that I've drawn in the eyes, it's easier for me to tell where I want the shadows in the watercolour background to be. So to do this, I just take the dark reds and the dark blues and define some of those watercolour markings. So I just put the darker reds on some of the portions of the red watercolour, just to kind of add a bit more depth to the watercolour. I don't add the colour pencil towards the edges of the watercolour because I like that. Um, that kind of watercolour crisp edge that makes it look watery but I just add it towards the middle of the watercolour markings so as you can see adding that coloured pencil really makes the watercolours pop and the different layers pop out by adding the darker blues and the darker reds onto some of the layers Okay, so now I'm just going in with the white colour pencil and I'm just defining some of this mask areas and adding some of the detail. But apart from that on the watercolour background, the only other things that I really do is I add that white gouache by tapping it with my paintbrush to add a bit of white dots and a bit of sparkle to it. And I'll do that towards the end, but for now I'm just going to fill in the rest of the drawings and the detail on the mask and some of the jewels and all that. So I decided that I wanted to do some of the jewels in gold, but then after I did it I really didn't like it, so I decided to go over it all in white, which I did, but then I just decided to scrap all those jewels and start again, and I just did a different sort of design on it, which we'll see in a minute, but my camera kind of cut out, so I missed um, recording myself changing it in the end, so you'll just see it go to the final sort of result. Okay, so now I'm quickly going in with that paintbrush and I'm just going to tap it and as you can see it adds some nice little white dots which look really nice in some pieces and really help the background pop. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. I really hope you found it useful. Let me know in the comment section if you found it helpful and if there's any other tutorials or videos that you want to see me do. If you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll leave links to my social media in the description below and I'll see you tomorrow.